On this interview for the Alliance of Independent Authors Indie Fringe, I'm talking to James Scott Bell, who is a number one best-selling thriller author and also a writing expert. And uh, we're talking about his new book, How to Write Stories and Use Them to Market Your Novel. So, hello, James. Hello. Hello. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. So, obviously, you're an aficionado and a great advocate for short story writing. Why do you think authors should write short stories at all rather than just concentrating on longer works? Well, it's interesting because uh, for so many years of my career, I've not been an, uh, a real advocate of short stories because the form was rather mysterious to me. Um, <clears throat> I s studied with a great short story writer named Raymond Carver, many people know, uh, in college. I had a workshop with him, and uh, it was a total mystery to me how he did what he did and some of the other students did what they did. I just never had a real handle on short stories. And so when I began uh, trying to learn the craft of writing uh, in earnest many years later, I did concentrate on, first of all, the screenplay form and then uh, novel length fiction. But then a few years ago, I wanted to see if I had missed anything. And uh, I went back and kind of re-studied short stories, read a number of short stories, kind of asking myself what was going on with them, and they, especially with the really great short stories. And I, I finally hit on something that made short stories change for me. And so you asked about the reason for doing that. And some of the reasons are, number one, it really helps you hone your craft for your full-length fiction. It, it helps you to learn about uh, characterization quickly, how to have tension in dialogue, how to de describe with an economy of form, uh, and, and things like of that nature that enable you when you actually are writing scenes in your novels, they, they help you. But then I also found that um, it's just, it, it's fun to write short stories. It's, it enables you to do things you wouldn't ordinarily do in a short period of time, so you're not, you know, spending a great investment of your writing time on it. You can explore different genres. You can explore different voices. Uh, and then finally, I learned that in these latter days when uh, the digital revolution has taken off, short stories can be a tremendous way to help with your your marketing. So for all of those reasons, and um, even a few more, short stories are a great way for writers to, to practice and to be strategic with their career. Okay. So I guess one of the first questions people would ask is, how long in terms of word count would you say a short story is as opposed to something like a novella or a novelletta or whatever they're called, right. the shorter works? What sort of words, word count are we talking about? Yeah, I think uh, roughly speaking, there's pretty much agreement, again, roughly on, on the various lengths. The short story is traditionally about a thousand words to say 7,000 words around in that area. Usually, uh, it's going to average between 2,000 and 5,000, my guess is. But that's the range for a short story. Below that, below 1,000, you get into what's called flash fiction, which is uh, uh, a special option now that's particularly um, popular online. But that's the short story form. Between about 7,000 and about 20,000, what's called the novelette, which enables you to do more in terms of uh, character, number of characters and, and plot and setting and so on. And then 20 to, 20 to 50,000 uh, would be the novella. A uh, 50,000 word uh, novel is really the, the, the minimum for, for that form. And then on up would be novels from there. Okay. So you mentioned a bit about story structure in your book. Uh, how do you think a short, short, short story should be structured, uh, and how is it different from something like a novel in terms of story structure? Well, a couple of things. A, a short story, because of its length, really almost always deals with just one main character. One main character, uh, either through their point of view, 
written in a third person or a first person style, uh, or even if it's done in an omniscient kind of way, it really focus short story focuses on what's happening to one character in particular. Uh, there's not a lot of room for massive movement in terms of location and so on. So you're really focused in on uh, a main character in tandem, usually with another character, an antagonistic kind of character or group, or sometimes it's one person against nature and uh, so on. But that's really the, the overall look of a short story. But then in terms of structure, it's really interesting because, you know, I've spent a lot of years teaching and studying full-length structure, and I always thought that the short story didn't really have a, a you know, a kind of form like that you could um, coalesce around. But then, as I was studying the form, I determined that there really is a structure, and it goes around what I've called the shattering moment. And uh, I'll be happy to explain that uh, in a bit, if you like. <laughs> okay. You guess what my next question was going to be. It's like, what exactly is the shattering moment, and why do you think a short story should have one? Okay, that's the key, I think. As I've read all different kinds of short stories, different forms, different genres, the thing that started to come across to me was that they were taking this one point of view character and exploring a shattering moment for that character in terms of their life and what that can mean is it, <clears throat> it can mean that it either fundamentally changes the way they look at life it can mean that they are forced to confront themselves in a way they've never done it before it's that sort of emotional uh, resonance that this shattering moment Brings now the shattering moment doesn't have to be a, a you know huge explosive kind of thing although it very often is it can also be more subtle if you think of shattering glass you can shatter you know a huge window or a drinking glass but whatever form it takes whatever emotional form it takes it happens to a character and then changes the trajectory of their life. And so, as I honestly, I, I, it's hard for me to think of a short story that succeeds, that is really worth reading. And by the way, when we read a short story, the reader wants to experience an emotion. They want to feel some kind of um, emotional resonance themselves. And uh, so the shattering moment, I think, is essential to that. Because without it, you really don't have an actual story where something happens to someone. Okay. So, um, I know in your book you describe, the, like, obviously, several positions where this shattering, shattering moment can happen within the, within the story. Is there any one that you think maybe people should start with putting this at, say, the beginning? Or does it really make no difference where the shattering moment occurs in the short story? Yeah. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you, let me explain those, those five positions because it really makes a short story extremely flexible for you as a writer. You know, the, the shattering moment can happen at or near the beginning of a story, and then the rest of the story is a record of the fallout from that moment. It can happen in the middle of a story. So a story is going along on a certain trajectory, and then all of a sudden, boom, this thing happens. And then the, the direction of the story changes, and we follow that. It can also happen at the end of the story, which is sort of like a twist, twist ending, usually. You think of the stories of uh, O. Henry, for example, or Jeffrey Deaver, who writes these great crime stories that have these incredible twists at the end, and suddenly everything that happened before has changed in perspective. And then... You can have a story, and, the, and this probably I, I would say that those three positions would be best for a, a writer, a new writer with short stories to try to attempt, because the other two positions are really sort of in the more literary style. Um, so as an example, you can have the shattering moment happen before the story begins, 
And then the story picks up and you're seeing the people dealing with it and you're kind of, um, you know, inferring what has happened before from what's going on in the story. An example of that is a famous short story by Ernest Hemingway called Hills Like White Elephants. So I, I would recommend that story to anyone who wants to find out what are these people talking about? Well, it becomes evident in the story what they're talking about, something that happened before. And then the other uh, position <clears throat> is sort of uh, what I call the implied shatter. And that's where the story ends and you are left feeling like that shattering moment is about to happen or is going to happen sometime very soon after the story has ended. And again, this is a, a literary device primarily. Uh, the, um, there's a famous short story written by Erwin Shaw, called, who was a great short story writer, American uh, 20th century, and wrote a lot of short stories for The New Yorker. And it's called Girls in Their Summer Dresses. And it is a story of a husband and wife, middle-aged, walking in New York. And the husband keeps looking at these beautiful girls in their summer dresses. And the wife is noticing that, and she's annoyed with it. And the story goes on, and it ends without any big resolution. But you get the feeling like the wife's life has been shattered or, and is, or is about to be shattered as soon as the story ends. So, taking all that in, into mind, um, it's, I think it's great for a story writer to explore those different positions because the more you do that, the more you understand the importance of the shattering moment, and it really helps you to write short stories that matter. Okay. So, I suppose many authors would be saying that... Maybe they like writing short stories, but they've noticed that for ebooks certainly, and also for, well, it's very hard to have paperback short stories, but the royalty rates are lower. So how would you su suggest people actually use this? is more the independent publishing side, obviously, but this is the Indie Author Fringe. So how would you suggest that authors actually do make use of short stories? Why is it important for authors to actually write short stories? Well, there are a couple of good strategic reasons, I think, beyond just the improvement of your craft, which helps, you know, your, your whole career. Uh, one reason is that short stories can be used uh, in a free promotional way in order to attract new readers to your work and to you as an author. And especially starting out, that's what you want to do is... You want to get as many people looking at your material as you can and using short stories in a promotional way, either by publishing exclusively with uh, Amazon and using their promotional or by using it as a, a free inducement uh, for um, on your website for signing up for your email list. Um, there are a number of ways you can you can do that. Uh, Amazon is probably the most powerful way uh, to try to get new readers and then you at the end of your short story you have a link to your uh, email sign up list and to your website your other works and so on um, another reason that you uh, or a way to use short stories is as uh, promotions for an ongoing series sometimes um, I'm, I'm seeing this with traditional uh, authors, big name authors who are writing series will write smaller works in between books to try and get new readers in and promote the series as it's going along. And they'll write in between stories or stories that are prequels or that fill in backstory information. So you can use them in that fashion. Another way is you can perhaps want, if you want to explore a new genre, or even stay within the genre you're, you're trying to brand yourself with, write a series of short stories, again, using them for promotion, but then putting them into a collection, which you can sell as uh, an actual full-length ebook. So these are different ways of viewing short stories strategically, and um, I th a number of writers are doing this in a successful fashion. Okay, so uh, what do you think, this is a question I thought of on the hoof, so uh, apologies if it sounds stupid, 
What do you think about the idea of using a short story as like a pilot for a, a series of books that you're thinking of writing, but you're not sure whether there's actually going to be a market there? Does that approach work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's a tremendous uh, opportunity for a short story. Um, you, you, can, you can write a story or maybe a couple of stories uh, as a way to explore the idea uh, you'll get feedback from that. You'll get uh, readers responding to that. You'll get reviews on that. You know, I think, uh, as I recall, you know, the big success of Hugh Howey, who wrote the Wool stories, began simply as a, a single short story. I think it was about a novelette for maybe 12,000 words. But he wrote that and got tremendous feedback from it and so then he wrote another one and got more tremendous feedback and it grew and built based on the quality of the writing and the story and so sure that's a tremendous way to try something out like you say like a pilot yeah and do you feel that the people who read short stories are necessarily the same people who read longer works or do you think that it's a case of if you try it out and it's successful as a short story, then it would be a different group of people who are generally reading novels? I mean, is it the same marketplace, or do you think that lots of novel readers also read short stories? No, I, I, I think it's fiction readers will read short stories, especially if they like a certain genre. If they're following romance genre, or they'll read a romance story. If they're following a suspense or thriller genre, they'll, they'll read short stories uh, like that. Uh, I think there's a big opportunity for short stories, especially now with uh, uh, younger people and reading on phones and so on for, you know, standing in a line or at the doctor's office, whatever it may be. You have time for a short story and if you can catch on with an audience being able to deliver in short story form that just uh, adds to you know your credibility as a writer of full-length fiction and uh, people will follow you to uh, your full-length work if you can capture them with short stories okay so how how personally are you using short stories yourself at the moment what, what sort of techniques are you using are you using it as a sign up for your email lists or are you using it as a way to track people to your other books or have you got some other cunning scheme that you're not telling us about nothing nothing cunning about it i mean that's what i've described uh here today is really what i'm doing now i i approach stories differently in different ways i think primarily what i've been doing up to this point is just when i've gotten captured by an idea and I really want to write it, but I don't think it's going to be a full-length uh, novel. I just do it for the writing joy of it. Um, most recently, I just I had this wild idea in a genre I don't write in, which is the speculative fiction. And um, I just well, I was watching the Star Wars movie Rogue One, which um, has Peter Cushing in it. Of course, Peter Cushing's been dead since 1994. Yeah. But they used this great computer-generated um, image, imaging, and it was, you know, fantastic realization of that. And I thought, well, you know, in the future, they're probably going to be able to make whole movies with just dead actors. How how great would that be? You don't have to pay them. You don't have to <laughs> feed them. Um, and then I thought, well, what would happen if, let's say, they wanted to make a John Wayne movie, a western. And they, they had the, they realized this computer generated image of John Wayne and they combined it with artificial intelligence and everything was going smoothly. But then this John Wayne hologram refused to say the lines in the script. And I just thought that was a little, that was a funny premise, not enough for a full length novel. But I sat down, and I wrote the story and I showed it to some people, got some feedback, rewrote it. And then I just put it out there. Uh, as a Kindle exclusive, I used their five free promotional days, and I had a link in the back to my uh, email list, and it had a tremendous reach. So it can be done. It is being done. And um, I, I think primarily, though, I like to write stories for the, the satisfaction of doing it well, no matter what the genre is. Um, 
And that's kind of the way I approach it right now. Okay. So if we go away from the indie world, obviously I think there are still publications that do print collections of short stories. How would somebody go about getting their short story into one of those collections or books uh, mm. if they were interested in going down that route rather than publishing it on Kindle? Well, there are, first of all, a number of traditional location, uh, even you know, print journals in genre and in literary that are very prestigious and would be a good place for a writer to have work appear. And the writer would give, you know, first publication rights to that journal and then would retain the, the, the rights to do with later as they please. But that's one way to explore getting into a, a whole different audience. So that's certainly something to think about. As far as collections go, I'm not sure that traditional publishing is uh, publishing short story collections as much as they used to. And it used to, even then, when they were doing more of them, kind of limited to authors who already had a name, who were uh, award winners, well-respected uh, critically, and so on. So I'm not sure. I, I think in the ebook world, when you publish a series of stories that have the same theme or genre or character, uh, you yourself can do a collection. And then there are contests that you can enter your story into. And then there are anthologies that are being sponsored by groups like Mystery Writers of America or International Thriller Writers, which if you join those organizations and you submit a story, it can perhaps be published in one of those anthologies. And that's always a good thing, too. That's a, another way to you know add prestige to your name, to your brand. So... Yeah, there, there are possibilities, and they're all worth exploring. Okay. What would you say to, say, somebody who, and I'm not of this kind of writer, but there are writers who have great trouble reducing their writing down to like more concise forms. Would you say that there's any real issue if somebody doesn't want to write short stories at all? I mean, um, obviously they have great marketing potential, but for people who aren't interested in writing short stories should they even really uh, i'm saying should they consider just attempting it just to see what it's like or should they just stay with their two hundred thousand word <laughs> novel or whatever <laughs> well i mean there's really uh, nothing that would force or compel anyone to try something they really don't want to do i suggest however exploring the short story form especially in this yeah, um, shattering moment idea, which is the subject of a book I wrote called How to Write Short Stories yeah. and Use Them to Further Your uh, Writing Career, uh, as a way to maybe see that there is a possibility there for you that you hadn't known about before as a writer. Now, uh, speaking for myself, again, uh, there were many, many years which the short story form just scared me uh, because I didn't really know how to go about getting into it and shaping it. I managed to write a couple of short stories that were published, but it was almost by accident that I that they meant anything. Uh, as I look back on them, though, I can see what I did was I did have a shattering moment in those stories. It just it just kind of came out naturally. Yeah. But now that I know that and I think and I'm hearing from other writers that it makes the the initial formulation of the story so much easier. It makes it so much clearer in your mind that you can concentrate on other things like, you know, your style, your characterizations, and, and so on. And another thing for people who like, uh, you know, prefer full-length fiction, which, which I do as well, is that a short story, when you attempt it, can really help you to learn how to write better scenes for your novels. So there's really nothing wasted when you attempt and, and practice the short story form. Would you say there are any genres where short story writing doesn't work very well? Um, I'm thinking probably more on the more literary side, but um, is there anything like where a particular genre you've heard of, it doesn't work as short story form? Or are there any genres where it's particularly useful uh, to write short stories? 
Yeah, interesting. No, you know, as I, I I can't think of any genre, and I include literary, where a short story couldn't work. Uh, I really, I don't think that any exists, because really a short story is a slice that would fit into a larger uh, narrative if you wanted it to be. So, honestly, I don't think so. And, uh, you know, in terms of popularity, you know, there are certain genres that are more popular, perhaps. I mean, the, the thriller genre, the romance genre, um, uh, speculative fiction are, are always popular. Um, westerns used to be quite popular. I don't think they are as yeah. much anymore in the traditional world, but certainly there's room there for somebody to write uh, a series of great Western stories again. Um, that, that's what's so nice about having digital publishing available and in, you know independent publishing, and then the the option of exploring what you as a writer really want to explore in in a short story form. Okay, uh, I mean one genre, I suppose. Is nonfiction, uh, as in like that's not really uh, fiction at all. Um, have you? I mean, obviously, your your actually your book about uh, how to write uh, short stories isn't that long. It's towards the shorter end of nonfiction. Uh, do you think short fi uh, nonfiction itself is getting shorter in terms of what people are publishing? Well, look, nonfiction can certainly be in a presented compellingly in a in a short format. If you think of the great um, nonfiction articles that were published uh, and are published in, say, the New Yorker, and these will run maybe five thousand to ten thousand yeah. words. Um, you can treat a subject compellingly, and um, you know it's a it's a whole different approach to the writing than than fiction. But there are certain similarities. I mean, you you can shape nonfiction in a way that it, that it feels like a a um, a short story and you know now that you've mentioned it it's interesting i i would think that you could find if you were shaping a narrative in a nonfiction form in that length you could find the shattering moment yeah in that story in that narrative and you could place that at, at a strategic location in fact thank you i'm going to try that <laughs> <laughs> I suppose people could do that with their blog posts or anything, really. I mean, you could have some sort of major impact in the middle that makes people want to uh, carry Look, on any reading. Kind of, any, you're, just, you're telling a story, in, yeah. in whether it's nonfiction or fiction, you're telling a story, and you can, you can shape the, the narrative in terms of, uh, like, the, you know, for instance, the timeline. You, you can decide to start with a shattering moment in a nonfiction narrative and then drop back and, you know, fill in how they got there. Or you can do it a number of different ways. So, yeah, that's, I, I think it works. I suppose going back to the shattering moment, uh, so we've got a little bit of time left in the interview. What would you say uh, are some of the best examples you've seen of a shattering moment in particular stories that you've read or even ones that you've written yourself? What do you think, what kind of thing works the best? Hmm. Well, I mean, again, it is uh, so flexible. I mentioned Hills Like White Elephants, where the shattering moment happens before the story begins, and it's very subtle. And it's masterful what Hemingway does in this story, because he never comes out and actually names the thing that happened before. But it's something that has changed the relationship of these two characters forever. And and you you pull that information out as the story goes along. Uh, I mentioned Raymond Carver now. Of course, he's one of the masters of literary fiction. And in my book, I'm, I talk about a story of his which we read when I took the workshop called A Will You Please Be Quiet, Please? Uh, it's one of his early stories. And it's a story of uh, a husband and wife. They've been married for several years. And they're having a conversation, this normal domestic conversation. It, there's a little bit of tension that you sense going on between them. And then the, the, the conversation turns to this incident that happened at a party a couple of years earlier. And the husband 
finally drags out of the wife the uh, truth that he has suspected, that she actually slept with another man at that party, and um, he hadn't really gotten that information before. And naturally, that's the shattering moment, and it happens in the middle. And the moment that happens to him, the rest of the story traces his reaction to that. So it's that's a very powerful, uh, you know, Carver's a master of taking something like that and, and putting it into a normal situation. Now, contrast that with someone like Jeffrey Deaver, and I really like his crime stories. He's written a couple collections of these, and his stories all have these twists at the end. So you're reading along this story, and you're thinking, okay, it's going along this way. Uh, I think I see where it's going here. And then, boom, at the end, there's this twist, and you go, oh, man, I did not see that. When when you can accomplish that in a story, it's very satisfying to a reader. So, And that's more of an event um, shatter as opposed to the the shattering moment which comes through the you know the dialogue and the relationship of two characters so there's subtle difference there but either way it changes the perspective on what's going on so i would recommend um i would recommend the stories of um, lawrence block he also is a crime very famous crime writer and he has a collection of his short stories and his his are almost uh, literary in terms of how he, especially his stories about Matthew Scudder. So a lot of great short story writers out there. Erwin Shaw, I mentioned. Uh, John O'Hara, who was a well-known American writer whose reputation has not followed um, so much uh, up into the present, but deserves rediscovery. Uh, John Cheever is a famous one. Um, Hemingway and there's just a lot of possibilities out there. Okay. Um, I thought of another question of the opposite of my previous question. What if somebody only wanted to write short stories? Do you think that there is an opportunity for people to make a living just writing short stories, given some of the royalty issues that there are with short stories on Amazon and other platforms? <clears throat> you know, I don't know anyone. I can't think of any author lately who has managed to make a living just writing short stories. Um, there may be one or two, but I, I doubt it because the, the marketplace for those for short stories is rather limited. Um, back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, when there were a thriving pulp market and a thriving slick magazine market, then it was possible. There were a number of writers who made livings just churning out pulp stories. But though those markets have, have gone. But in a certain nice, serendipitous way, it's like we have a new, say, pulp market for yeah. genre short stories in independent publishing. The ability of writers to do that. Now, they're not going to make the kind of income, first of all, the cost of living has gone up quite a bit since 1930. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I think the, the main value of short story writing is for the, the marketing effect, adding to your full length fiction, uh, reclaiming sometimes your writing joy. Um, but if if a writer is really wants to specialize, let's say in in literary short story writing, certainly there are those out there who are producing really great quality stories, and then having traditional publishers put together collections for them. But most of those people are probably also teaching college classes in writing. So, um, you know, it's again, it's a form that's very flexible. But I I wouldn't advise someone. Going, who wants to try to make a living as a writer to just specialize in short stories, might be a good place to start, though, to you know help you hone your craft. Yeah, I mean there are certainly it's a lot easier to edit a short story than it is an extremely long one in terms of uh, all the various issues that you can get. Um, so I think that's just about wrapped up the interview. How can people find out about you and 
the things that you've got going on at the moment and also what's what have you got planned beyond uh your short story writing what's the next thing you're going to be looking at well uh my website is james scott bell.com and uh, that that'll fill you in on everything pretty much that i'm doing um where I'm appearing, how you can sign up for my uh, email list, which uh, gives updates every so often. Um, as far as my writing goes, I maintain a quota of words. Uh, I've done this ever since I started, and I, it's really the best advice I ever got was to write to a quota because there are you know some days when you don't feel as inspired yeah. as other days, but you got to get the words down. So. I try to keep to 6,000 words a week, and I have subjects that I want to cover in a nonfiction way, especially subjects about writing. And uh, in fact, I'm due to have a, a new book on writing coming out very soon. So if people are interested in finding out about that, just you know sign up for the email list because that'll be coming out. And then I want to keep up with my uh, uh, genre fiction. I'm writing. I'm writing thrillers and a, a series of thrillers, and I'm just uh, I'm a, a squirrel on a wheel, and um, <laughs> just trying to keep that going. Yeah. So you're not writing your romance short stories to uh, try and break into that market or anything. <laughs> but you're giving me all sorts of great ideas here. I mean, you know, I'll just have to. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also write on uh, another. So it seems to be a joint blog, the Killer Zone, or something along that. Long nice yeah, it's called a Kill Zone and KillZoneBlog.com, and that is a. It's uh, been one of the top-rated writing blogs for years. It's a a blog where I and a group of other thriller and mystery writers. Yeah, uh, we write on the writing topics uh, every day. My particular column comes out on Sundays, but it is a tremendous resource for writers. We have archives on all aspects of writing so if someone is really wanting to dig in and study the craft that would be a good place to go uh, would you suggest uh i'm going slightly off tangent here but would you suggest it's a good idea for writers to team up on a blog like that so that there's several of them say writing one article once a month rather than having their own especially yeah. writing blog I, th I think that blogging for an individual is very challenging today to start yeah. a blog because there are so many. And you have to put in so, so much effort and content in order to get people coming back that it's the danger is that it will just suck out your creativity and your energy for the most important thing that you write, which is your full-length books and short stories. Um, so I... I I, I t tend to try to get the writers off of thinking that they have to blog. But if they can team up with some other writers for on a group blog, I find that writing one article a week for me is perfect um, and doesn't detract from my other writing. So that there are a number of excellent group writing blogs out there and um, you know one one other way uh, uh, writers can um, leverage a blog is to become a good community member of a blog you know, you know if you can become someone who comments on posts and offers you know real um, value then you become a, a member of that kind of community and that's also something worth exploring but um yeah if you can team up with people so much the better okay well it was great to talk to you today james likewise <laughs>